So it's about 6.05 on my clock and I'll call the regular, regular meeting to order. Um, first item is to uh, set a just agenda. Um, I have one thing I think, and that is um, I'd like to add something to uh, have the select board consider a resolution supporting the Hardwick Electric um, H11 solar project in the gravel pit. Um, I, uh, I had meant to get that on the agenda and I did not get it on there. And I think we're going to uh, delete item five, so maybe we could swap those out. Anybody have anything else? What is item five? Uh, we're considering the ninth annual Kingdom Games swim at Caspian Beach, but I think they've decided against. Yes, doing. it's been canceled. Okay. Um, Do you want a motion, Eric? I do. Is that does anybody else have any changes though? Nothing from the manager's office. Okay, so we'll just make item five, take item five, take that one off, and make the H one eleven resolution there instead. Is that okay? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I just swapped um, select board. Uh, so item number five, what I have now reads: select board to consider resolution to support HED's H one eleven solar project or H eleven. Sorry. Uh, Eric, can I offer a suggestion on that? Wouldn't we yeah. want to back that up just under uh, Mike giving his report in case he have any, has any thoughts and then he doesn't have to hang on? Oh, now you're thinking. Move that up to an item number one. Is that all right? That's a good idea. Uh, okay. All right. So then can we move item one to item five? Uh, as Al unless Alberta is. Oh, unless she's not saying that's true. Yeah. Just shift everything down, Casey, because Alberta's on the line too. Okay, so shift. Is my down. that's my suggestion. I know it's select board's okay. prerogative, but that would be my suggestion. Okay. Sure. All right. So. All right. So in my marked up agenda now I have um, everything same as it was except item number one is now select board to consider an HE, the HE, a resolution to support HED 11, H11 solar project and then everything else gets bumped down one item five is to until we get to five is deleted six is the same. Is everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Okay so yes a motion would be lovely Wiz. I move we make the changes that you have suggested. Second. All right. Um, any more discussion on the agenda? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Can I see Kaylee's hand? She's an aye. aye. Okay. Yay. All right. That's everybody who's here. So good. We have an updated agenda. We're going to roll with that. Um, Hang on, I'm just going to try to get both my screens side by side here so I can see you guys and see my agenda. Um, so, all right, after that, next is um, to approve minutes. We have two sets of minutes, one from the last regular meeting, which was April 16th, and one from a special meeting on April 21. Um, could we have a motion to, actually, I wasn't, Let's do them separately. Can I, we have a motion for the, to accept the regular minutes? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Does anybody have anything for those uh, minutes from April 16th? <laughs> All in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 I see Kaylee. That's everybody. Who was the first and second on that? I didn't catch it. I'm sorry. I moved. Sherry seconded. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, thanks. Next is uh, approved minutes from this. Oh, geez. Special select board meeting of April 21. I motion that we approve those minutes as written. Second. 
So, yay, yay, yay. okay. You have we have a quorum on this, Eric. You can abstain. We still have a quorum. Mm. No. Work if Sherry had a conflict of interest for does that? Sherry, oh, excuse me. We need to table it until uh, Lucian's on then. Yeah. Um. Move we table this yeah. until Lucian <laughs> joins the meeting. I second that motion. All right, all in favor of tabling. All right. Aye. All right. Aye. All right, we're tabled. Uh, next communication from the audience. Um, <laughs> oh, come on. I mean, we, yeah, all right. Doug, have anything? <laughs> okay. So next is um, town manager's report. Sean Fielder, give us the report. Okay. Um, ongoing adjustments to business operations due to the state of emergency. And uh, as part of those procedures, we had all our team members, all the staff complete the VOSHA online training by the May 4 deadline. We had one exception, but that person's on leave and they'll get it completed when they're back to work. Continuing to provide the essential services and uh, we're ramping back up on the office uh, work side of things as we do the phased restart. Um, there's gonna be some time in late May into June where uh, certain staff are going to still be doing work at home processes so we're watching uh, as this goes and um, just recognize this is for our service audience just recognize you know there's still going to be time where we're limiting public access to the buildings just for the social distancing and uh, you know the related processes um, just uh, one other key thing for everybody to hear is, you know, right now the Hardwick Select Board is meeting online, but we're st we still have to develop the plan to get the other boards and committee uh, committees uh, functioning. So the key point there is that, uh, as an example, Planning Commission, DRB, Recreation Committee, uh, you know, some of these other groups, they're on hold, and we're working this out to get them back up and in order. I've been doing regular updates, uh, just given the state of emergency and uh, COVID-19 information to the town website, also Front Porch Forum. Remind everybody that we have the Hardwick Neighbor to Neighbor Support Resource, resource Information up on our website. So if you go to the homepage, hardwickvt.org, we've got the COVID-19, uh, there's three buttons in the upper left-hand corner that uh, folks can access information. We have completed the uh, processing for the local emergency management plan that has been filed with the Vermont Emergency Management Division, so everything's in order there. Did recently discuss the Spring Fest approach with the president of Qantas Club, and uh, folks should know at this phase that the Spring Fest, including the parade, has been uh, canceled uh, just to the concerns with social distancing and uh, you know issues related to that. There's no schedule. There's no reschedule determined at this time. That's something that will be figured out as we as the uh, as we move forward calendar wise. Kiwanis Club is um, uh, a lead role on that. I want to remind everybody to participate in the 2020 census. Uh, information shared with me earlier this week by a regional director indicated our response rate is somewhat low compared to other Vermont communities and also compared to national response rates. Um, the census information can be processed at 2020census.gov or you can call 844-330-2020. You can complete it uh, that way with an interviewer. Um, in addition, if you've received your information, you can process online at home. So it's important we do this because the response does determine how federal dollars are distributed in Hardwick. It makes a difference for funding opportunities on various programs. That's really important for us. We have had um, AT&T has filed an advance award notice for the Buffalo Mountain Cell Tower proposal. Uh, this basically provides notice of a preliminary narrative on what is being sought out for the project and its opportunity for the town to review and offer input and or request more info, information from AT&T. And uh, just for a status check, as was discussed most recently by the select board, AT&T is and has been working rec directly with the electric department on details associated with meeting the HED construction standards for the power needs for this proposed project. So I did touch base with Brian Ferrant at the department. Uh, AT&T at this point has not demonstrated that they can meet the HED construction standards. 
this uh, is clearly indicated in their advance notice that they are working on this process. Uh, just remember, uh, this is directed, uh, just, uh, sorry, uh, select board's last conversation on this. It's been the same narrative right along for this past three or four month period. AT&T will be working with HED on the application to meet the construction standards. Uh, so nothing has changed from that perspective. Uh, with, with that information in order, then the discussions would be picked back up by the select board on the issues associated with right of way, including use and use of the road and uh, condition of the road ongoing. So that's the information there. Um, continuing to work on uh, getting information prepared for the LVRT, the rail trail projects, the rec projects. There's been some delay in processing given various offices are on hold given COVID-19. Uh, just a disruption there, if you will. We're working toward getting bids released into uh, in early to mid June. So, uh, with the information at hand, I think that's achievable. Uh, we have had communications with our engineers on the design documents. We're communicating with VTrans. We're communicating with our funders. So, I believe things are advancing as well as they can. Um, we uh, on some other projects. We uh, will have some punch list work done. On the Bridgman Reservoir roof system, uh, just recall it came online in early January. We had a few punch list items that had to be completed, so uh, Spates Construction reached out to me on this, and they're working on getting these items taken care of. So they'll start doing their work in this next couple of weeks, and that's allowed on the phased restart, restart processes that the state of Vermont has uh, moved forward on. Um, I am uh, reviewing the details associated with the uh, sludge cleanout of the wastewater lagoon. Uh, whether our operators, with our uh, support engineers, uh, that's something that's needed. Uh, it's a significant project for the community. Um, and uh, we're looking at uh, implementing this probably late summer uh, at this phase. So um, that's something that's in the works. And um, we are going to be working in a flush for those, of those folks on the public water system. Uh, we, were, we will be working in a flushing procedure. Uh, I think everybody remembers we, we were out of cycle on this because of the issue with the Bridgman Reservoir being offline. Uh, we're going to work in this flushing procedure uh, probably in the early part of June. We'll be coordinating with our engineering firm on the procedure and uh, operations crew get that taken care of. Okay, two other things. Uh, we'll be processing an NBRC grant application due the end part of May for funding support for improvements to the wastewater treatment facility. So, um, you know, we've, we've been lucky enough to secure a number of NBRC grants here in Hardwick over the years. And uh, we'll, it's gonna be a pretty competitive round. We know this, but we're gonna, we're gonna seek this out. And then um, yeah, what I'll close with is been having to react pretty frequently to uh, business operations guidance as required and recommended by uh, State of Vermont. And uh, quite honestly, it's been uh, quite a bit to keep up with. So, uh, you know, we're, we're doing our best for the customer service side of things. Uh, we're, you know, we're starting to get ourselves back in the position to get to our summer construction projects and keep things rolling. And uh, all in all, I, I, I believe our staff is uh, doing a, a good job on this. And uh, again, it's a lot to keep up with. So uh, be glad to answer any questions that there might be from the select board. I'll just say that, um, that piggyback on your the rail trail um, that we uh, all the stuff you're talking about is, is are the projects that the town had worked on previously we still don't know what's going to happen with the proposal that the state fund building the entire rail trail from St. Johnsbury to Swan that's all um, uh, I I can put some numbers to it really quick, Eric. Just the broad theme that I got this week from the Vermont News was the uh, prediction is uh, Vermont revenue off uh, 440 million, which in percentage terms is 7% uh, of the state's budget. So you know, we, we know there's gonna be some retractions. Yeah. Um, so uh, we, we just gotta see how this goes, of course. Um, hi, Lucian. Uh, muted. Yeah, you're muted. <laughs> there you go. I had a quick question. Oh. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Kaylee. First, Lucian, it looks awesome out there. I love that you're outside. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, my, uh, my, my daughter had a thing at the same time, so I had to come down to the library. So. <laughs> oh. um, I did just really quickly want to mention in terms of the neighbor to neighbor group that um, Ray Basa mentioned to me that they've opened up the Wi-Fi at Atkins Field. So now anyone who's at the um, community gardens or who parks at the pavilion, there's the Wi-Fi is open for community use. Um, and then I was also wondering, um, thank you for the up for a great update, Sean, about the um, as being I, I wasn't a part of the um, the conversations in terms of the cell tower, and it sounds like it's in the um, Harvick Electric's hands at this point. I just found the um, photo simulation package really interesting and really helped me kind of understand the location. And I was wondering if that's available um, at this time for, for the public to see or if we're waiting to really hear from the electric department. My answer is that we can, we, we're in a position where we can post that information as a part of the packet information. Uh, Eric, do you agree with that? Yeah, as far as I know, I don't think it's, it's public information. Anyway. I mean, it's public information. So, you know, it, it obviously it behooves us to get the information in front of people. Yeah. Right? So we could have that. We can have that as a part of what's up for the website attach, uh, excuse me, the meeting attachments. I think it would be a helpful thing to add so that you can kind of see the, it's, we're not there yet, obviously, but it does kind of help to, to see the big picture potentially. And you're yeah, talking and about, also, sorry, Eric, go ahead. You're talking about the coverage maps, Kaylee? No, I'm talking about the balloon um, simulation. The coverage maps also are helpful too, but there's a, a part of the information that AT&T gave us is the, um, they did a balloon launch um, to see where the tower would be visible and where it is in Buffalo Mountain. And I think it's just really, it actually is helpful to see, to see that. I missed that. Yeah, they're, they're simulated items that are, they're really valuable. I agree with Kaylee. It just gives you a good, you know, a good visual perspective. I think they're probably only valuable if you look at them. That's a correct statement. <laughs> Can I offer one other thing, Eric? I don't know if at the last, uh, in my last report, I think what I indicated was the, we're going to have good news on the EDA award for the Yellow Brand project. So this has been in the paper and um, Doug's on the line. So thanks Doug for picking up on this and Gazette has had information about this, but so it's recorded in the minutes. We have received the official notice. We have a $3 million grant award from the economic development administration. So that's a pretty big deal. It's one of the largest awards in the state of Vermont and it's a pretty, uh, pretty proud accomplishment for the planning team members to uh, you know, acknowledge and, be aware of and it's going to help advance this so it's good news uh, we had a um what was the call today it wasn't a kickoff exactly but it was sort of uh, so well actually award kickoff yeah where we just went over some of the logistics details and uh, yeah. uh eric and i were on that call and man the project officer for eda had to throttle down so there's a lot going on there as far as yep. just covering covering information fast <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean had to throttle down like she went oh, through, the, it was multiple pa pages and she just like went right through, boom, 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 boom. So we'll have questions later. <laughs> it's all good though. Yeah. That's all I have. Are there other questions for town manager's report? So um, I'm gonna take this moment to uh, return to our tabled, um, approval of the select board minutes from the special select board meeting of April 21 and Lucian we were waiting for you because I miss the meeting as I sometimes do and um, Sherry was uh, not there at the end or abstained or whatever so we needed Wiz, Lucian, Kaylee to approve those minutes. So we had a motion I think from Kaylee and a second from Wiz to approve those um, minutes and then we tabled it. So I'd like to bring it back up now and um, Lucian, it, uh, just give one more, if anybody has any discussion on those minutes from April 21, no? No, I think they're good. All in favor of approving the minutes as written from the special select board meeting April 21, please say aye. 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 So I'm gonna roll call that. That is Wiz, Lucian, Kaylee and the ayes and Eric and Sherry and the abstentions. Yeah, here we go. Yep. All right. Yes. Okay. Um, all right, 
rolling down. Next up is Road Foreman Report. Tom Fadden, um, tell us. I know I've actually seen that you guys have been out grading, but I don't know. Tell us what else you've been doing. Yes, we have been. Uh, actually, this week's been a pretty good week. Uh, just to let you know, we have started our summer, summer hours. Uh, so if people don't know what that is, that means uh, Monday through Thursday from 6 a.m. till 4.30 at night now. And we will not be working on Friday. So if people need water shut off or turned on and stuff like that, uh, please do it before Friday. If not, then we'll have to come in, uh, call in the guys there. Uh, we will have guys on call on Friday, so uh, we can call them in if if need be. Uh, so, but anyway, if, uh, is yeah. That, hey, uh, Tom, is that on the website? Do we... I don't know if that is or not. Because that'd be no, a good it's, thing. To... It, 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 it's not as of yet, so we can get that up. I'll I'll answer that. It's not right now. So that'd be a good thing. Cool. Okay. Uh, so anyways, uh, yeah, so we've gotten quite a bit of grading done, quite a bit of uh, uh, hauling some uh, gravel onto the roads and stuff. Uh, actually been a pretty productive week. Uh, roads are actually looking in really good shape. Uh, we've actually, shoulders are hardening up good, so we can get out on the edge and start pulling stuff in. Uh, the other thing that we've been doing is uh, finishing up our ditch work up on Belvery Road. Uh, I guess uh, everybody up there likes it because it looks like we've widened the road up there by four feet up by the guardrails. There was somewhat stuff up against them. Uh, we repaired some of the ditch line going down through because we had a little bit of, a, of the uh, bank issue up there of uh, sliding down. So we repaired that all the way down through to the main road. Uh, besides that, we went through 14 ton of hot mix today uh, down through the village and we still did not have enough. Uh, but we did get most of Wolcott Street done, but we still got the other half left to do. And I know there's some other places that we need to get to. Um, then the other thing that was happening today at the same time, Lodge and S did make it up to East Hard Hardwick to repair the guardrails that were all damaged by the uh, vehicle that smashed into them. So that's all completed. Uh, besides that, everything's been running good and everybody's got pretty good spirits, I believe. Sounds good. Um, oh, Tom, you also did, uh, yeah. I saw you, I saw you digging, uh, test pits for that, um, uh, the, the underground, yeah. um, what's it, who's it? For the stormwater project. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. I've, uh, we have, uh, went down there, I think it was last Wednesday. We dug test holes, uh, for the engineers to see what type of soil was down there. We had to leave them open, of course, for 24 hours to see what kind of water uh, would come into the holes and stuff. But this project, uh, Eric would know, been going on now for five or six years, and hopefully this will get underway here pretty soon. That will take care of all of our stormwater uh, up through uh, North Main Street and some on, I believe, on Church Street, out through there and over by the town garage. So that should take care of all the filtration system and stuff for those. Uh, for the Clean Water Act there that's going on. And I believe also that they're going to be going out to bids. I believe Carrie was telling us for the stormwater project down on the end of South Main, down by Donut Storage Sheds here right off too for the improvements down there. Wow. So we're rolling right along. Cool. And I did uh, Tom, talk to I you. Know, I talked to, sorry, Kaylee, go ahead. I just want to say thank you for getting the guardrail back up today, too. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Our next little project up there is, of course, that storm storm catch, catch basin there right on the bridge. So hopefully we can get to that next week since concrete trucks now are rolling around, too. So. Wow. Awesome. Uh, just two other things that are good under the public works category. Tom and I talked today about, uh, Tom updated me that he's shooting for the week prior to uh, Memorial Day. If the weather cooperates, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, touch up the crosswalk painting, uh, get the, get some of our sweet, sweet, uh, street sweeping taken care of. Uh, Tom, was that it or was there anything else? Uh, just the banner, uh, banner change out. Uh, uh, yeah, banner change Yeah. Out. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm going to treat this just as it would be for like a Memorial Day parade. Uh, just because we're not having no parade, that don't mean that we shouldn't, you know, salute the, uh, you know, for Memorial Day, the, you know, for the veterans and all that stuff. So we're going to continue as we would, even if there was a parade and get downtown looking good and everything else. So hopefully the weather within another week or so, supposedly it should start warming up enough so we can do some painting downtown and stuff and get things ready. So. What, what kind of paint are we going to use? White. <laughs> yeah. For the crosswalks, what kind of paint are we going to yeah. use? We're going to use white? Yep, yep. We're Not still the sticking the white cherry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you were kind of breaking up on me on that part, Sherry. I didn't understand the second part you were saying. It's all right. I just wondered if we were changing. I wonder if we were changing the paint. No, not not yet, Sherry, because we're kind of waiting for, uh, well, for for you guys, kind of for the, uh, oh, the crosswalk guys, or the uh, committee that you guys set up, so we can, you know, all get together on the same page, you know, if we want to change them to a different color, or if we're going to go ahead and order a couple lights this year, you know, to try to make some improvements downtown. Uh, so we're going to okay. keep them the same for now. Hey, one thing we talked on that about subject. In the past, sorry, go ahead. Uh, in the past, we talked about um, painting them, uh, repainting them partway, like in midway, midsummer or something. Yeah, we're we're, we're going to have to do it earlier this year, Eric. I don't think we're going to be. I mean, last year we wanted to wait till towards the end of August and stuff, but then the weather just started getting colder on us, so that didn't really plan out. So if we hit it here in May, I I want to paint them some, some, somewhere again, probably somewhere in the beginning of August or somewhere around there, you yeah. know, and th at least then, you know, the weather's still at least uh, 70 plus degrees still, so. Okay, good. What I was oh. going to offer, Eric, is um, I did touch base with uh, Dave Gross is the lead for Planning Commission, so that group had been overseeing the Pedestrian Traffic Safety Task Force discussions, mm -hmm. and, you know, the intent was um, that, uh, the the recommendations of that group would be reviewed by uh tom and aaron with me involved with that discussion there would be an actual site walk to look at some of those recommendations then with that process completed the proposal would be advanced to the select board for consideration of what is to be implemented so i updated dave last week to say hey, look dave we got to get on these crosswalks we're not going to be in a position to get an, you know certain changes implemented on the front end of the season, we got to go on these things. So uh, Dave was agreeable to that. And uh, the way I'm looking at the process and I'm pretty comfortable, the, the group is okay with this. Uh, we, you know, we paint our lines this year. We are still keeping our opportunities open for that phase. Look, if say in August we have a recommendation about a change and it makes sense and we can fit it into this cycle this summer or fall, we do it. We just got to that point where we got to get these crosswalks down. We can't be uh, waiting for the recommendations, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. All right. Thanks, Tom. Yep, no problem. Um, next up is uh, Police Department report. Uh, Chief Cochran's on the line, I think. I'm, I'm here. What's been can happening? Me, I can hear you. Okay. We have, uh, I sent, uh, sent out the report. We For the month of April, we had 139 incidents, which is down from uh, April of last year. April of last year, we had uh, 204 incidents. Um, so we are uh, obviously down um, during this whole ordeal. Um, but, uh, but we're still out there, still working. We've ha actually had a few crashes uh, that have been not just parking lot crash, you know, fairly serious crashes. The bridge was one of them that we dealt with, which also had a lot of criminal activity involved with that as well. So we've, we've had a few of those through, uh, through this all. Um, we um, actually had... Um, we had one of our well the only part-time officer that we had left he uh is uh, going to be moving uh, to a different state so um he has resigned in the meantime i was already looking 
uh, applications because we, that had dwindled down. A lot of our part-time officers we had hired as full-time officers um, as, as it progressed. So um, I've actually um, spoken with a, we interviewed and, and talked with a, another guy who's already part-time certified and has worked since 1996 as a part-time officer um, for uh, Barry City and for uh, the Capitol Police. So um, he was looking for some more part-time work. So I've, I've spoken with him. Um, we weren't able to get all of the paperwork together to have it uh, for tonight. So we'll have it for the next uh, select board meeting. But um, so, uh, so, we, so we have that in the works. We have um, actually today we were able to, the police academy opened up testing again. Um, and uh, we had a candidate that we wanted to send down to test. Uh, for the entrance testing, which is the the uh, first stage of any type of employment, is to they have to test both written and uh, psychological profile, et cetera. So they actually opened that up today, so we were able to get luckily um, uh, that individual in to test at the end of May, uh, which would be testing, looking at our, our uh, open full time position. Um, so. Finally, some things are starting to open up a little bit so that we can uh, get some of that uh, going. Um, so that's where we're at with that. Um, we, as Sean had said, we were trying to work through the 35th or so administrative change handed down from the governor on how to be safe for essential workers. So uh, we're trying to figure all that out and work through all of that. Um, the, one of the latest things is thermometers. We were able to find thermometers, have those ordered to come in to make sure our employees are all healthy every day when they come in. So um, it's one of the latest changes. So, you know, we're working through that. Um, it's obviously very, I mean, it's re it's been going on for a couple months now, but it's relatively new to all of us. So um, it's trying to remember everything that we need to do is not something that we've done for the last 20 years so we're trying to work through all of these changes um, yeah and, and, but, and everybody's uh, real everybody's really happy with me when i'm uh, giving an update every 24 hours about oh this changed and that changed so we're working through it right i was thinking of blocking sean's emails actually but <laughs> that didn't work so I, so, <laughs> so so yeah we're working through all of it and and uh we're not the only ones in that you know everybody's that is an essential worker is having to go through all of these weekly, weekly updates um, to keep us safe and everybody else safe. So we're working through them. Um, other than that, um, same as with Tom, everybody's spirits are good. Um, we, uh, um, you know, getting through it day by day and, and hopefully uh, looks like maybe some things will start loosening up a little bit and people will be out to get out and um, as they call it, physical distance, but still communicate again. And I think that will be good for many people, um, for attitudes and, and uh, how people are feeling. So um, this has been an extended uh, cabin fever, so to, so to speak, I guess, uh, that everybody's unexpectedly had to deal with. So, um, so everybody has to, to work through that. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Aaron? Yes. As you were putting the numbers together, could you see a type of nefarious behavior that has dropped? You know, you say you're down a substantial amount. Where does the fall off happen? Uh, motor vehicle, motor vehicle stuff, motor vehicle work. People are staying home. Uh, not necessarily, but we're trying to keep our officers as safe as possible. So uh, we've had uh, some less interaction during motor vehicle stops. Okay. Aaron, this is Kaylee. I have, first of all, I wanted to just want to say thank you guys for doing all that you do. I'm also running the essential child care program. So it's weird to be out there every day. <laughs> um, I, and we just started too. We just started taking um, temperatures of staff, which is nerve wracking for us because um, we don't have that many staff. I know that you guys are also um, in the same boat. I'm just wondering if um, 
kind of if there's a contingency plan or a sub plan, if there is an officer who has a fever, um, have you, and I know there's a different guidance every day, but is there, have you guys set up backups or how, how are you expecting to kind of navigate through that? Well, the, yeah, we do have a contingency plan. I mean, all the officers are good if, if, uh, you know, somebody needs to come in to pull an extra shift because somebody else is sick. It, it really is no different than, you know, if somebody else had some other type of sickness and had to come in. So, you know, hopefully that doesn't happen um, or doesn't happen often. Um, but, we, you know, we'll work with it if it does and do the best that we can. And that's really all, you know, all we can do at this point. Um, you know, I think there's variables when it comes to temperatures. I mean, now we're also getting into warmer weather, sunburns, et cetera. So, you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure the temperatures are the answer, but the governor says they are right now. So we'll work with, we'll work with that and see how it goes. Great, thank you. Sure. Any other questions for Aaron? All right, thank you, Aaron. Sure. All right. Um, next up is the Hardwick Electric Department report, and we have um, Mike Sullivan in our in our Zoom. So, Mike, do you want to unmute and give us a report? Yep. Got me. Yep. Okay. I know it says Denise because I'm sitting in my wife's office. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, the COVID-19 derailed our lawsuit with KBS. Hmm. Um, at this point, we would have already had a jury draw and actually would have been heading into court the first week of, week of June had it not been for the pandemic. And I would have been very happy to have got that opportunity to get that behind us. Um, at this point, we're unsure when we'll get back on track. So more to come on this in the future. Uh, as an essential service provider, we've been working with and through the pandemic. We've been in operation other than face-to-face uh, -face interactions with customers and the public are uh, postponed. And we also uh, suspended all contracted services uh, mid-March. Um, we also suspended all disconnection procedures, and I want to note we did that before it was ordered by the PUC. Uh, since mid-March, uh, actually this week, we've just brought back uh, two contracted services, um, a rock crew to set poles on the transmission, and uh, our tree trimmers are back working now too. Um, other than that, we aren't sure when we're going to be fully back to normal. Uh, I'm hopes that we can do so sometime in June, but we'll continue to evaluate that over the coming weeks and see where we're at. Uh, lastly, in regard to COVID, uh, per my board of commissioners, uh, they instructed me to delay some capital expenditures uh, strategically over concerns for potential decreased revenues as a result of the pandemic. And we are in fact experiencing that. Uh, we've only been through one and a half cycles, so I'll know more in the coming two weeks. But at this point, uh, that de decrease in revenue is at a level that we can easily manage, so it's not a problem. Um, as I said, crews have been working uh, on the 3319, which is our tr transmission line that serves all HED customers. And they've been plugging away on that since the second week of January. Uh, we had two major outages on that line in 2019 that originate, originated from failures, uh, equipment failures, and identified the need to get out there and get after that. Uh, the overall project is to reclaim the right-of-way, which hasn't been maintained appropriately for at least 20 to 25 years. Um, HED, uh, for, the, for at least that time frame, was only clearing 50 to maybe 60 feet of a 100-foot right-of-way. So the other 
footage that hasn't been maintained had a lot of big trees that were blown over and causing us trouble. So the project is reclaiming the full 100 foot right away. And uh, we're replacing every pole, bolt, nut, insulator, washer, cross arm, everything on the line except for the wire, uh, which all that stuff was installed in 1960. So it certainly has, uh, doesn't owe us anything at this point. Mike, help me on the geography. Where, where's the general location on this? Sorry, I should know, but I don't. Yeah, so this line actually runs, uh, it's part of what used to be called the Lamoille uh, Northern Loop of the, uh, that served Lamoille County primarily. Uh, so it goes from uh, Stowe through Morrisville, through us, serves Washington Electric Co-op, and ends over in Marshfield at GMP Marshfield. So we're one chunk in there. Uh, we own one chunk in there of about five and a half miles. And that is from our Wolcott sub all the way to Green River in uh, Morrisville. So it's all cross country, you know, there's no roads. The guys are out there climbing everything. Can't get bucket trucks out there. So it's very labor intensive and uh, they've been plugging away. Okay. Um, Big project coming up for us. Uh, we are actively involved in a AMI and automated, uh, pardon me, automated metering infrastructure project, a joint action with and through VEPSA and the rest of VEPSA's members. I was lucky or unlucky enough to get appointed to the committee to evaluate no less than 850 page vendor proposals to make sure we, uh, pick and team up with the right partner on this project. It's gonna be overall for the whole VEPSA group, probably $7 million. Um, our part, since we're about 10% of VEPSA, will be something under a million of it. Um, but as a joint action, we're, we're able to save a lot of money, all of us. For example, uh, just the licensure for software on these AMI systems is $35,000 a year per license. And these vendors, instead of charging all VEPSA members that fee, they're going to charge us one fee and let us centralize it through the uh, server system at VEPSA. So instead of us paying $35,000 a year for a license, it'll be like $3,500. That's a great way to do it. Um, once the project's done, which will be sometime next year, uh, we'll have the ability to expand that infrastructure into outage management systems, uh, remote customer connects and disconnects. We'll have the ability to track real-time data so that we can do better load forecasting and our market purchases can be much more accurate with what our needs actually are rather than saying, well, we're going to need at least this, so buy X. Uh, we can really nail it down and save some money that way. Also, uh, the regulators are really pushing uh, time of use rate structures for, uh, for considerations of how solar is affecting the grid now. So on a sunny day at noon, rates are going to be lower than they are at seven o'clock at night. Uh, they aren't those aren't in place yet, but they are coming and uh, the regulators have made it clear, you better get ready because they are coming. So there's a few drivers on our AMI project. Mike, you're talking about the purchase side when you're talking about that, right? What I'm talking about what, sir? Um, uh, you say uh, they're saying, uh, you know, with uh, uh, high solar time, uh, it's going to cost less is what I heard. Correct. And, uh, and off hours, you're going to pay more. What I'm asking is, you're, you, uh, does that mean uh, yeah, for HED to buy, or are you talking about the, the customer side? Customer side, correct. Sorry. Okay, yep. thank you. Yeah, yep. no worries. Thank you. Um, so we expect the rollout of the actual systems at HED. I think it, in the scheduling, we aren't till uh, late next year. So... We have mapping to do and uh, GPSing of all our meter locations. There's a lot of work to do to get ready for it. So that's why we're shifted down in the schedule, but it should be up and going by the end of next year. Um, another thing I've talked to you about before was um, the upgrading of the Hardwick Village circuit. 
uh, over the coming weeks, crews will be out doing the, I think there's six uh, quick outages we have to have and that project will be 100% done. So that'll be done, uh, I'm sure by the end of June. And that's the one I was telling you reduces the losses on that circuit by over 87%. So it actually pays for itself over time. So that's a good one. Uh, okay, so the CPG for our H11 is expected from the Public Utility Commission sometime in the next two to four weeks. So that's great news uh, about a project that's good for HED and good for our ratepayers. Uh, as soon as we get that, we're all ready. Materials are all here and uh, we'll complete our piece of the puzzle, which is uh, constructing a new three-phase circuit <coughs> down to the pit uh, from Bridgman Hill so that the project can interconnect to our distribution system. And on this one, uh, the, I can't remember the term you used, Eric, but uh, the legal beagles that are finalizing all the paperwork on this are looking for a letter of support from all of you. Uh, something very simple, two, three sentences with your overall support of the project. Um, but I suspect, so I, I think if you, since I didn't draft something up, if you can give Sean the authority to sign something on your behalf, uh, I can do like a three sentence thing that he can go over or whatever. But a couple of the things <clears throat> I suspect would be helpful would be, uh, yeah, we're supportive of this, as well as the structure that HED set up. And I say that because the structure is a little bit different. Um, normally a developer pays us all the costs for interconnection of a project. So that line we're gonna build down in there, uh, the transformers, everything, usually they pay for. In this case, Hardwick Electric is paying for it because over the life of the project, we drove the kilowatt hour cost down so far, we come out way ahead by doing that ourselves and getting the lower rate on the kilowatt hour you know, cost per kilowatt hour. Um, so that would, is what I'm talking about by structure. Also, we uh, did a very reduced lease. I think it's $1,000 a year, and we built those reduced costs into the lowering the kilowatt hour rate as well. Um, but two or three sentences is really all they're looking for um, on that, Eric. And with that said, I'll open myself up for questions if anybody has any. Yes, Wiz. I live in the village. Are we going to get warnings about these outages? Yes, absolutely. How? You'll probably get your door knocked on two or three days before to let you know what's going to go on. And they won't be big, long outages. They'll be like 10 minutes. Okay. So the, the guys have been working to split up the system so that we can do it in 10-minute chunks. So it won't be a major event for you or anybody else. Excellent, thank you. I have a question about the main transmission line you were talking about early in your report. Um, and maybe this is not related to that, but um, I remember in years back that um, when we've had major outages in Hardwick, it's come up that, um, that there's believe it's a transmission line that connects us to Morrisville and also connects us to um, um, to who's on our other side Green Mountain Power oh I thought I was thinking of uh, um, the co-op Washington but anyway whoever it is Not I thought so, so I thought there was a issue where when there was a problem on either side the other side would automatically switch off as a safety and then we were kind of stuck in the middle without power. I don't know if I understood that correctly, but anyway, I'm wondering if that's resolved or if that's, maybe you could tell, tell us about that. Sure. So the uh, Washington Electric is fed out of that line as well, but they're not part of the loop. They're a tap line that goes to one place and stops. So it's okay. a tap line. So the line actually, the loop piece goes from Green Mountain Power and Marshfield, all the way to Velco Stowe, through us, through M Morrisville, all the way back down to Stowe. 
the piece that we are served by, <clears throat> there's a breaker in Morrisville. There's a breaker in Marshfield. When there's a problem between those breakers, they both open up. 15 seconds later, one in Marshfield closes in and turns us back on. So if that closes in and there's still a permanent fault, then it's gonna open up and we're out until the fault is fixed. And that's what happened on this instance that I was referring in my report. So even though that okay. automated system is in place, the fault was <coughs> permanent. So it took everything out and it stayed out. Does that hold okay. up? Yeah, I guess. So, so um, in the, I mean, it sounds like in the case when there's a serious fault, we have to be out until it's fixed. Depending on where it is. Yeah. So if it's in a piece of line where we can sectionalize, so let's walk through that. So boat breakers open up, Marshfield closes, there's a permanent fault in between, so it opens back up. We immediately dispatch crews <clears throat> to Wolcott substation, split the system in half, and we shoot it again from Marshfield, try and get half the system back on. If it goes on, then we know the fault is between here and here. If it goes out again, then we close in from here and open this one, close in here, and we get this half of the customers back on and find our fault where it is over here. So that okay. takes about, to get a crew in and dispatched and switching orders and all that, takes about 35 to 45 minutes. And then, right. you know, you could still have a fault that takes both sides out depending on the situation, but that's rare. But we did run into that. Okay. All right. Um, so then the other thing is we had, uh, we adjusted our agenda to um, do a resolution. I d yeah, I didn't have any language from you. So I, I did a one sentence, but if you have some language that, um, that or if you want to develop some language that's more specific to the project because i didn't i mean i don't i don't really have anything like you were talking about the structure and that um if that works better for you and you want to get that to sean then we can roll that way too perfect i can do that in the morning um any more questions before we do that any more questions for mike before we roll on the select board um eric right. do you need to eric you're gonna you're gonna take a action or not just i'll uh, just yep. how are you gonna go on this yeah okay yep. thank you that's so we're, okay we're yeah, gonna I'm move to it. item number one which is the um the resolution in support of the hardwick uh electric department h11 solar project which is in the gravel pit and mike's just talked about it some um so not if you could let me interrupt you once here so i i do have a letter um, from way back when, but it was from John, uh, not you guys. And that's, that was kind of the origin of, Hey, we want one from the select board, not the town manager, but I think one from the town manager that came with select board instruction and approval will be just wonderful. Okay. Uh, the other, okay. That's fine. I mean, there, I imagine we could pull up minutes from the meeting that where we authorized John to support it too, but we could do it again. That's fine too. That I figured it would um, be easier to just do it again. Yeah. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions or anything about the support about select board support of the H11 project or about what it is or anything? So um, maybe uh, so it'd be great to have a motion to direct the town manager to draft and sign and deliver a letter of support to uh, in support of the Hardwick Electric H11 solar project. So moved. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. Um, any more discussion on this? Eric, All would you favor? like to be involved in, would you like to be involved in, in the language development? 
You mean I, I could read it? I mean, yeah. it's going to be electronically gonna, circulated anyway. <laughs> Mike's going to draft it. My, Sean's, Mike's yeah. going to draft the content. Yep. Yeah, yeah I'll, Sean will – you, you want to just run I'll it by me, I'll bump it to Sean. you before I yep. sign it. I'm sure it's going to be good. fine. Yeah, me too. Okay, by Wiz? Yeah. Uh, any more discussion? All in favor of uh, directing Sean to sign this letter, please say aye. 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 Everybody, Kaylee, was that you too? I'm going to abstain because I don't know enough about the project. Fair enough. Is there anything you want to know or you want to know later? I can know later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm available now. I was going to say, I can tell your curiosity is getting the best of you. <laughs> uh, no, that's fine. I can tell you what I know anytime too. All right, so there we go. Motion carries, and uh, Casey's we'll got the roll that. call, right? Casey definitely has a roll. Yes, I got it. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right, awesome. Thank you, Mike. And next up is class one and two liquor licenses and. Uh, Alberta, Eric, I think a point of order, Eric. Do you have to read back the roll if it's not a unanimous? Yes, actually, I do. Thank you. So um, the eyes were uh, Wiz, Lucian, Eric, Sherry, and the abstention was Kaylee. And then the motion carries. I got right. it. Yeah, I know you got it, but I think Sean's right. I probably need to. No, 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 I know, yeah, I know you had to. I'm just saying I also got it written down. Yeah, great. And you're an I right. also. Huh? You're an I also? I was an I also, yes. Um, so next is the um, class one and two liquor licenses. Looks like Alberta's on our Zoom. Um, so Alberta, who do we have uh, licenses to renew today? We actually just have one class two license for Walgreens that we need to do tonight. Did Scalehouse not get their application in? Apparently not. No, we still don't have their application in. Yeah. All right. I was directing somebody to get in touch with you. Um, all right. Uh, so, could we have a motion to approve a class two liquor license for Walgreens? Alberta, are there any problems? No, nope. Walgreens has been perfect. Okay. I move that we approve the uh, like the liquor license for Walgreens. Second. All right. Any uh, any more discussion? Albert already answered, we don't have problems. Aaron's still on the line. I'm sure he would say something if we did, if he had anything. Usually he nods, but we can't see him nodding tonight. Um, I'll on his end. Okay, good, thank you. All right, so all in favor of approving a class two liquor license for Walgreens, please say aye. 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 All right, that's everybody. So it's a unanimous ayes uh, have it. Motion carries. Thank you, Alberta. Sure. Um, next is uh, about extending dog license deadline to June 15th. That's Alberta again. Alberta, is June 15th going to be far enough out? That's a really good question, Eric. I, I would have thought May 1st was going to be far enough <laughs> out, but what we're finding now is that, um, you know, veterinarians are not all opening back up yet. And so people are not able to get rabies certificates. And without a, without a current rabies certificate, we can't license. So um, we've had good luck with the mailing. Um, people have been very responsive to that and we've really appreciated it. But unfortunately, we still have quite a few that are trying to get in with their vet and get a get an actual shot for their pup. So I, I don't know. We it's a hard it's a hard number to predict at this point. Yeah. 
I like what she said. I've been saying this a lot. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Sherry. I I have experienced a vet that isn't open. I mean, there are different um, procedures. Like you wait out in the parking lot and they come and get your pet and take it in and et cetera. But I I don't know. Is our Hardwick vet open? I don't know. Um, Yes, she is. And, and they've been doing stories on the news the last two days about how vets are, you know, it's Burlington. But, it, you know, I, I didn't know that vets were not open. So, I, I yeah, June ought to be fine. Okay. <laughs> June, June 15th it is then. That's what Alberta's I feel, asked I for. Feel like, I feel like we have to pick a date and that just has to be the date. You know, like all right, we're we're trying to be as, as you know helpful as we can, but there's got to be an end date at some point, and hopefully June fifteenth has given everybody enough time. So, good. all right, yeah. and since our fiscal year ends on June thirtieth, it would be good to have it a little bit before that. Okay, so uh, how about a, a motion to extend the? Sorry, I just had a quick question. I'm not a vet by any means, but is there any kind of safety uh, considerations about that? Well, they're taking them all. I mean, I, you know, they're they're doing that thing. They have they have their ways of uh, dealing with uh, br- people bringing their pets and stuff. Like you can't go into the office anymore, et cetera. I've, but they they all have methods. Yeah. I meant less about COVID, but more about dogs with rabies. So if there's a dog that, that was just a question for, um, even more for Aaron. That's a problem. Yeah, big time. Uh, In case Aaron's left, are you on Aaron? If not, I can try to answer. No, I'm still here. You want to take a stab at it or you want me to? I didn't hear Kaylee's question. What's the uh, what's the issues we get into if somebody's bitten by a dog and they don't have the rabies shot? You want me to answer? Yeah, I mean it's still that's still going to fall under under uh, under your uh, ordinance. So all all the rules are still going to apply under the ordinance, anyways. <laughs> the dog could be yeah. quarantined, et cetera. Yeah, for the person bit, they're going to have to go through the uh, rabies treatments. Yeah, it's not good. No, but so you know, I I mean, you're talking you're talking a month or two months. I mean, people should be able to get their animal in, and it just gives them a little more time to to get it, you know, to the town clerk. But um, I think most responsible pet owners, as soon as they can, are going to get into you know a vet and get the necessary shots that have to be done. Honestly, from our perspective, it seems more like when we get a claim that a dog has bitten someone, it's a dog that's never been registered with us in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. More so. And I believe that there's kind of a buffer with the ones that have had previous shots where that, you know, give or take a month or so, the shot is still active in their system. So, um, you know, that they're still slightly protected more than a dog that's never had a shot. Yeah, I don't think it's something that has to be redone on the day. It's, I think it's pretty pre-covered. All right. That was a good discussion for a lot of people who don't, aren't really veterinary doctors or medical doctors. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, how about, um, uh, but how about a motion to uh, extend the dog license deadline to June fifteenth? So moved. Second. All right. Any more discussion about that? All in favor of extending the dog license deadline to June fifteenth, please say aye. 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 All right. That's everybody. Right. Everybody's an aye. Okay. All right, so the ayes have it, and uh, motion passes, and there you go, Alberta. Thank you. Yeah, I no, thank you. Alberta. I had a quick question, Alberta. 
Hey, I was wondering about, yeah. um, about since we're doing things by mail now, like um, I know I send in my property tax money, big check, and so I always get nervous if I don't have a receipt. So <laughs> I'm just curious how you're going about doing that and how that works. Your check is your receipt. So yeah, anybody that requests a receipt, anybody that requests a receipt, we're mailing them back one. Um, if they don't request, we haven't been only because, I mean, we get a lot by mail every year and they're not looking for a receipt. Usually it's just the ones that come in that are looking for them. Um, but if someone does want a receipt, we're happy to mail them one. So by all means, just put a little note in there and, and we'll, we'll be happy to send you out one. And if you haven't put a note in with your original payment, feel free to call the office and we'll get one out to you in the mail. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. That's very accommodating. Um, all right, next is uh, item, uh, well, whatever, it was the original item three, but now I guess it's item four. Reminder, discussion about taxes and uh, water and sewer due dates. So I think the issue here is we had discussed um, options around our so our tax deadline is May 10th, um, which is coming right up. And uh, um, we had received guidance a while back that there weren't really many options for us to change the deadline or change really anything about it because the um, the deadline had been set by a vote of the town, so the way to change it would be a vote of the town, which we couldn't do because we could pull people together. Um, and then, um, recently, the legislature has taken up a um, bill to uh, allow select boards to um, to go ahead and make some changes. And I think it includes modifying the date and even the tax rate. And But I don't think the governor signed it yet. And even if he had, um, I, I don't think it helps us much because uh, we would still have to collect the school, the education tax money. Um, and that comes up right in June. So it's not really that long after our tax due date. Um, anyway, that's my kind of summary of where we stand, but Alberta or Sean, one of you, do anybody have any more things to say about tax due date? That's where what you described is what we understand as well, as far as uh, what's uh, being advanced from the legislature. We're not aware of this adjustment taking place uh, yet, the governor signing it into law, and I think you put it well. If even if this were to take place, the town's still obligated to cover its payment for the education uh, tax payment. So uh, I think holding the line is, uh, you know, what we've agreed to up to this point. Uh, I'm not sure there would be an advantage to making the changes. I guess what I would say on the due date. That's that's Alberta. That's your understanding too. That is also my understanding. Yes. Yeah. Select board people, any questions or discussion about that? Okay, and then the water and sewer due dates. Um, Alberta, somebody needs to refresh my memory because I don't remember. Uh, water and sewer is due um, May 15th um, for the third quarter billing. Um, we were just kind of running it through the same course as the, as the taxes that you know, we need to we need to get paid as much as we possibly can because we have to keep running the system. So yeah. I don't know if Sean's got anything more he can add with that. Same same commentary. We're um, uh, I wouldn't want people listening to think we're not tuned in to the fact that there's going to be some folks in hardship situations. But uh, you know, for those that are have the ability and are able. If you can pay, we're asking you to do that. And then, you know, we see where we fall in regards to the returns. That, that's the general narrative. And Alberta and myself and Tanya and Casey and Amanda, we've, you know, we've been talking about this ongoing for some time now. 
uh, just trying to, uh, you know, be prepared, uh, you know, moving forward. If somebody is in a hardship situation, uh, being prepared to um, offer uh, uh, further assistance by uh, entering into a contract. Um, just on that particular issue, uh, this is in regards to property taxes now. We don't know um, uh, as it stands. Eric has mentioned that the legislature is taking up doing some adjustments on allowing a municipality to make adjustments on fees and dates and things like this. But there's nothing noted um, as it stands in regards to offering the town uh, an opportunity uh, not to uh, pay a penalty if we don't garner enough uh, to cover this education bill, if that makes sense. So we had hoped that might be the case. Um, as it stands now, it's not. Uh, why is this important? If we, you know, if we garner enough to cover this education bill, gives us a little bit of flexibility on what we can do with those folks that want to enter into a contract, if that makes sense. You know, maybe we do have the opportunity moving forward to adjust on fees and penalties, but as it stands now, we don't necessarily have that opportunity given state statutes. I hope that makes sense. It gets a, it's a pretty complicated discussion. We're trying our best to boil it down here. So would, would we be able to do that retroactively? I mean, taxes are due in three days and then the penalty kicks in then, which is our last meeting until then. I mean, you said that the governor hasn't even signed the bill, so we don't really have the opportunity at the moment, but. Right, we don't. Do you know what it says? Yeah. My, yeah, my answer, I'm not, a, I'm not an attorney, but my answer is I, I, I think we'll have options, but it's hard to say for sure. Okay. I mean, if the, if the law change came after the 10th, then yeah, I mean, if the law changes, I would imagine they would uh, you know, have something that's, uh, uh, you know, at the town level, you can decide how you want to go. Just for what it's worth, I want listeners and, you know, citizens to hear this. Uh, uh, on behalf of the community, I did offer some testimony uh, two weeks back on this issue to the Vermont Senate Government Operations Committee and asked, please consider waiving uh, fees and penalties. Please consider offering up a waiver on fees and penalties for the town as well in the event we were to come up uh, short on, you know, paying this bill. You know, bear in mind, if we come up short, then we're having to dig into our limited reserves and or go on the market to pay the bill. So don't want to project dire straits right now. We just all know that around us, there are going to be some folks that are definitely being impacted by the situation and we're going to have to adjust accordingly. So when, when will we know, how long does it take for you, Albert, Alberta, to figure out um, where we're at with that? Would you know by, say, our next meeting on the 21st, I think it might be? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, we will. We usually know. We usually know within two to three days of the due date what we've got for an outstanding dollar figure, give or okay. give or take a few postmarks that that come in. But yeah, we're usually two two to three days, and we can have a delinquent figure available. Okay, so maybe if you let us know as soon as you know, then we can, you know, think about it a little bit, have more time. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank the clerk's office, thank Alberta and Tanya. They, uh, you know, they're essential services as well. And we have, you know, coming off the last select board meeting, we obviously had the discussion about, look, we got a certain number of customers that pay in person. So, uh, you know, we made, we made some actual construction adjustments to the clerk's office. We have a plexi screen that's been installed by Mark Sassy, which is a really nice addition to the facility uh, in the effort of protecting, you know, everybody uh, involved with the interaction. Alberta and Tanya have set up special hours to be receiving payments. We're going through a procedure where we have one person come into the facility at a given time. So, uh, you know, it's taken uh, involvement and participation and activity by obviously our town employees, uh, by the clerk's office, but also by those customers that are involved. So, you know, it's, a, it, it's an acknowledgement to the customers as well. You know, you're being patient with the process. We're all working through this. And just a reminder, if you can pay by check and mail it, if you want to drop a check or a money order in the Dropbox, you can do that. We're doing our best to accommodate. I'm not in charge of the clerk's office, but obviously I do the dance. And I just want to say thank you, Albert and Tanya. They're doing extra here for everybody. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, it sounds like that's a, a good system. 
So, so Alberta went. It seems went to be working very well right now. Yep. So, in, in the last few days here, what are the? Sean said there was some time so that people could come in. You have still some time left. Oh, yep, we were open this past Wednesday from nine to one. We'll be open next Monday, um, which is the actual collection date. Um, we're doing nine to eleven and three to five. Um, you know, but if there's a line of, of people, obviously we're just going to keep going until we get them all in. So. Okay, great. Just in case folks aren't aware, uh, it's one person at a time coming into the building. Uh, we are uh, requiring uh, visitors for this uh, wear a face mask. So just be advised of that. And if you're experiencing any symptoms, which are defined as cough, fever, or shortness of breath, uh, we you wouldn't be allowed to come into the building. So, you know, the social distancing, we talked about it earlier on for how it impacts our employees and our operations, but it's pertinent for anybody coming to the, you know, the public visit in this instance as well. So just everybody be aware of this. This information is posted on the exterior of the building. And, and just, yeah. Just as, a, as another piece, we do have some, um, we have some face masks um, that were made um, by Morgane Bell and dropped off at our office, um, individually wrapped very neatly so that if people come in and they don't have their own mask, um, we have them available before they actually enter the offices. Um, and we also have them, we've asked that everyone use some hand sanitizer before they come in. So. There is a process. It, it's not as quick and easy as it usually is, so. No, that sounds like you have a lot of the, a lot of the details covered, though. Yeah, the, the information is also posted on the uh, homepage of the town website as well for everybody. So uh, we've been doing uh, some updates on Front Porch Forum as well ongoing. So we're working through it, right, Alberta? Yes, we are. All right, thank you. Um, uh, unless there's any objection, I'm gonna move on. So hearing none, we're gonna move on to item number, f the, I guess it's five now, uh, which is a resolution for, or an official resolution for the NEK Community Broadband Communications Union District and select an alternate board member. Um, I think we only recently learned that an alternate um, that we could select a alternate and we haven't advertised for that yet, but we do have one letter of interest um, from Paul Fix. But before we get to the alternate thing, I think we um, is there's a there's an issue where the NEK um, the CUD wanted a particular resolution. Is that correct? Yes, and it's in the folder, so yeah. it would probably need to be read. Right, and so that was, um, even though we appointed last time, um, we still, they didn't, they didn't like our, they're just our meeting minutes as, right. as our say so. <laughs> Yeah, so let me just... Yeah, they asked all towns to complete this specific resolution indicating that we had approved the cut at town meeting and so forth and yeah. so on, and so if you want to read it. Yeah, I'm <laughs> looking, memo, any K. I have it, Eric, if you want me to read it back. Select board, uh, hang on. I'm almost, I'm almost there. <laughs> I got a resolution. Like re We've had got five hours of Zoom today, so we're done, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So it's a a resolution approving the the formation of the NEK Community Broadband uh, Communications Union District and appointing a representative to the governing board thereof. thereof. Whereas the town of Hardwick at the annual meeting thereof held on March three, twenty twenty, elected to form the NEK Community Broadband Communications Union District, quote, district, quote, NEK CB, under the provisions of uh, 30 VSA Chapter 82, and whereas the town of Hardwick has good reason to believe that one or more 
other towns have elected to form the district at their annual meetings held on the same day and whereas as provided in section 3059 of said chapter the legislative body uh, uh, of each member town shall appoint annually on or before the last monday in april a representative and one Oh, and one or more alternates to the governing board of the district for one year terms and whereas uh, provided in the section 3060 said chapter the governing board of the district shall hold its organizational meeting annually on the second Tuesday in May following the appointments contemplated in section 3059 and whereas the select board of the town of Hardwick desires to accomplish the formation of the NEK Community Broadband Communications Union District. Now, therefore, be it resolved that to the fullest extent permitted by law, the select board of the town of Hardwick hereby confirms the action taken by the town at the March 3, 2020 annual meeting thereof, whereby the formation of the NEK Community Broadband Communications Union District was approved. To the select board of the town of Hardwick hereby approves the creation of the NEK Community Broadband Communications Union District and its qualifications as a communications union district under the provisions of 30 VSA chapter 82. And three, the select board of the town of Hardwick hereby appoints the following representative and one or more alternates to the governing board of the NEK Community Broadband Community Broadband Communications Union District for terms of one year each. Um, the representative that we had uh, that we approved last time was Laura Berkman. Um, and then there are places for alternates, which are not, which are blank now. And then um, it says adopted at regular meeting of the select board of the town of Hardwick duly held on the 7th day of May, 2020, a test select board chair, town clerk, so that's something I sign and Alberta signs, I guess. So there's that. I read through the whole thing and we should um, we should approve that to be all um, all present and correct in terms of what the CUD wants. But uh, we also, in addition, um, have the opportunity to appoint one or more alternates. We do have um, a letter of interest from Paul Fix, who's here with us in our Zoom. So, um, would you like a motion? Sure. So, I'll make the motion that um, we approve the resolution of the formation of the NEK Community Broadband Communications Union. Union District and appointing a representative to the governing board uh, and including um, Laura Berkman, who we approved last meeting, and uh, Paul Fix as an alternate. Second. I guess I'm wondering what the, what the, what's the difference between this and what we already did? Um, this is doing it on the form that in the form that they want that the community NEK community union district wants it in. And clearly, they like being called the communication uh, union district rather than that other term that's being used. <laughs> Just say it. So, um, so, so does it, does this is this go any further or anything different than what's already been approved by us already and already approved the town meeting already, or is it the exact same? No. And I'm uh, are, are we actually, no, it just adds Paul as the alternate, and it adds their their language that they wanted. Right. But it's, I guess my question is: Does the language actually change anything significant? Which I'm not. I'm not. I didn't go by and compare it to the other two things that we already did. No. I mean no. all. It, Essentially, where the town already voted to join, help form and join this thing, and then we already appointed Laura Berkman to be our representative. So, I'd, I'd, you know, this is it's just different language as far as I can see. Okay. 
think they had a lawyer they're... prepare it. It's it's formation language, so they're trying to match up with bylaws on forming, and we didn't have that level of detail on what we all talked about last time around. Is my interpretation? Okay. Does anybody, um, any of the select board, have any other discussion on this or any questions for Paul? Because the motion is to appoint. Um, Laura Berkman again as a representative and Paul as an alternate. No, I don't. Okay. So, mm -mm. all right. So, hearing nothing really, then uh, all in favor of approving this, please say aye. 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 So, I think that's everyone. So, motion carries. Welcome, Paul. Thank you for your interest. Thank you, Eric. Congratulations, um, Paul, I think. Thank you, I hope. Um, just a couple of quick things, if I may. One, I think that motion you just approved had to be the way it was because it had to refer back to their pre-acceptance of bylaws. But going forward from a week ago Friday, their official name is now Northeast Kingdom Community Broadband. Oh, that's which, much better. Which is a CUD, but Northeast Kingdom Community right. Broadband. Should think about it. Um, the other thing, and I, I probably should have made this comment during public comments, and I could hold it until the to new business if that's more appropriate. But um, the public. Uh, service board has released an emergency broadband plan that um, includes uh, 1.8 million dollars to provide broadband in Hardwick and if I could have just a minute to share with you the existence of that and a public comment period ending May 26th I, I could do that now or I could wait a couple of minutes so Paul I thought that um when I looked, I looked, maybe I didn't look at the same thing. What I looked at, um, it looked like a report that offered the current status and the, um, the number of people who don't currently have broadband and the approximate cost to remedy that situation. I didn't realize there was actually um, any real money involved yet. Well, I, my guess, and this is only a guess, is that this, the, it's, I don't know that it's real money, but they're estimating $4,200 per unserved location, which with Hardwick's 427 unserved locations at 25.3 for speeds, it comes to 1.81 million. I suspect that what they're doing is putting out this $300 million plan. And if I go to the beginning, it's called the Vermont Department of Public Service Broadband Action Plan, a plan for addressing the COVID-19 emergency. My guess is they're trying to get a section of the 1.2 billion the feds have allocated to Vermont when it gets here. My that's that's a guess, but I suspect that's what this yeah. is. Yeah, it's definitely something worth following. I, I can but, send a, a link to their web page to Sean and he can take it from there. That's that's really all I wanted to share. No, oh, great. Thank you. Um, yeah, there was a night, there was a nifty map that they had that had a, every town and how many, what percentage, how many people, how many yes locations were not served and what percentage that was and then the approximate cost and the the percentage ranged from zero in the Burlington area who are underserved to 100 percent in some towns like Stannard or, or Woodbury where right. when the phone rang I lost the connection right <laughs> yes <laughs> just just saying <laughs> yeah 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 so, so the interesting thing about this, and, and you know, Laura may be the person to address it more directly, but it's not clear to me from the enabling legislation of the CUD you know, 
whether with something like this, Hardwick ought to be looking at it separately from the CUD or whether Hardwick could turn to the CUD and say, hey, this thing has come out. Can you help us address it? I, I don't really know. And I, you know, at, at this point, I, I guess I would assume that the CUD acts in some ways like the solid waste district. And in theory, they're kind of a, an employee or I, let's not call it an employee, but an arm of the town. If, if you had to have a person on staff who knew everything the solid waste district did, it would cost you a lot of money, but you can turn to them and say, hey, do what you need to do to regulate our haulers, et cetera. I would assume that in this case, you could turn to the CUD and say, help us, you know, are you guys drafting a response to this and how would Hardwick's concerns, needs, et cetera, be incorporated in that? Yeah. So. I have a question, Paul. Um, are you following up on the, uh, I know that Lee had done a separate broadband initiative legislation he's putting out there because one of the concerns with this big pot of money the federal government has is that it has an expiration date on it of the end of 2020, which is kind of a problem when nothing's built. So I'm going to suggest yeah, I, that you, you guys could take this conversation out, offline off the select board. Uh, Thanks. My thinking as well. Thanks, Eric. Um, all right. So, um, so anyway, you're appointing me and I'll be in touch with Laura so that, you know, we, she's leading and if she can't make a meeting, I'll be able to make it for her. So thanks. So, sounds great. All right. Um, but now that I read that whole thing, I lost my agenda. Where is it? Too many windows. Select board agenda. There we go. Uh, okay. It looks like the item six is Caspian Beach Operations Plan 2020. And I think Sean had an update on this. Basically, the governor in in one of the, or maybe the most recent update, said that the boat launches can be open, but beaches are still closed. Isn't that more or less the scoop? Yeah, the uh, the framework is we've had some questions from uh, the committee that oversees, the Caspian Beach Committee that oversees operations. Just a friendly reminder, the town owns the uh, launch and beach area on Caspian. So the latest directives were, are, excuse me, uh, you know, the boat launch is not a state launch, it's a town launch. Uh, the, the perspective I've been taking on this is uh, there's nothing that would need to change in regards to the use of the boat launch. That continues, you know, as is the case now. With the governor's addendum 13 to the state of, state of emergency uh, yeah, issuance, um, beaches are still closed. So technically somebody should not be swimming at that area. And uh, in regards to use of recreation areas, uh, it's a park, if you will. That's kind of what we're talking about here with the grassy areas for Caspian uh, Beach location. In order for those to be used moving forward, uh, we'll work, we would work with the committee on this. There's going to be some specific language that would have to be posted on site. Uh, things like uh, you know, um, keep your six feet, uh, you know, no, no, no groups close together. Um, you know, we already. Uh, no tailgating as an example. I mean, everybody already knows uh, technically no alcohol allowed in the location, but it, this is more delving into making sure people who are using the facility are practicing the basic social, social distancing measures. So some additional detail, there are picnic tables there, but technically those can't be used. So we'd have to you know, put them aside or barrier them, if you will, as simple as flagging or something like this. They're not supposed to be used. Uh, there's a there is a bathroom there in order for that to be used it would have to be cleaned on a regular basis that's something that the committee will have to iron out so the context of the discussion here is uh, you know at the top level the town owns the, the property so uh, you know obviously we have a liability in the end my observation is that we can work with the committee and I have talked to Chief Cochran about some general strategies here Aaron's comfortable with us saying boat launch continues to be used as is we do the signage to update folks on what the current guidance is from the state of vermont we're going to ask you to follow that guidance um, and then do things such as okay the picnic tables aren't going to be out you know with the um, the uh, stay-at-home processes uh, being relieved uh, or uh, lessened i guess is the correct word 
we're going to anticipate uh, additional changes moving forward. But uh, you know, we've got to we got to properly post and uh, make sure it's being used appropriately. I guess is the the key phrase here. Greensboro, as I said, has been asking a lot of questions. The select board actually brought it up at their last meeting, so they reached out to us. Um, and the committee uh, oversees the operation. So Isla Hunt is the chair of the committee. She and I have exchanged some information. So I'm, I guess I'm not, it's more of an update, I guess, is what I'm getting to, Eric. I don't necessarily need to have a, uh, anybody do a motion or approve. I just want everybody to be advised. This is kind of how we're going. Bear in mind, this discussion isn't unique to Caspi, and it also comes up when we're talking about the Macville Recreation Area or use of Atkins Field. It's the same type of discussions. So it's brand new territory for all of us. Go ahead, Eric. And uh, just going to open it up to Select Board to with any questions or comments. So just just wanted to be clear on it. It sounds like the the boat launch is is going to be open as is, like you said. The beach is closed, but the park part is going to be open. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's that's what I would anticipate. Um, I'm going to be double reviewing the information in consultation with the committee, Lucian. And yeah. with what, you know, that, that's basically what we're anticipating at this phase. Here's the reality of the situation. We get a 70 degree Saturday or Sunday, which we've already had. People are going to use the facility. We're not going to string a chain across the road. The boat launch is going to be used. So if we can just do some diligence and, you know, part of this discussion is, you know, citizenry and users of the facility, uh, you know, we need you to play ball here and do the right thing. And there's one other angle on this. Um, you know, we, we can't be, uh, they're doing enforcement with our police force. You all know that we contract to Greensboro. It's a town owned facility. It's our police department that does the patrolling on this. But the fact of the matter is, um, there's other more important uh, public safety issues that our police department needs to be focused on as opposed to, Oh, there's 11 people in a group, not 10. You know, these are the kind of things you could potentially be getting into when you go down a rabbit hole of just a, wrong use of resource, I guess, is my, my comment. When will the signs be going up? I can't answer that. Uh, there, you know, we haven't had this level of discussion yet at the committee. So there aren't any signs in preparation or anything yet? That's correct. The, uh, the guidance was released yesterday. And it's supposed to snow this weekend, so it might not be a great beach weekend. You're not a polar bear. Well. <laughs> Do we know if the park is supposed to be open, then do the bathrooms have to be accessible? It seems this like is, that's uh, where you'd run into problems. This is a question but, for the committee, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's, the it's 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 also in you got to look at your guidance too. I mean, there's so, things in the guidance that get into a little detail here, but I I agree with Eric. I think it's you know this is where it goes to the committee. With, yeah. Um, the committee is going to be with with my my insight uh, and review and Aaron's as well. Uh, the committee I did share or I am going to share obviously the updated addendum information so that. Uh, the committee understands here's here's it that has to be done from the committee's perspective what's odd about the whole discussion is um, you know uh, there if we're at a, a normal time of uh, if, if we weren't dealing with a COVID uh, pandemic um, this is an open use facility all year round as it is so uh, you know we wouldn't necessarily be open right now if I can put it that way what I mean by open is we sometimes have an attendant around, you know, we have somebody that mows the lawn, we have somebody who keeps an eye on things. So, um, you know, in some respects, this is a type of a facility where, look, citizenry, you got to kind of monitor and help keep track of things. And we shouldn't have to create a whole level, uh, another layer, if I can just say it this way, where, you know, we got to be uh, out there with, uh, uh, you know, uh, microscope on, you know, trying to monitor all the activity. We just got to ask folks to you know, help, help us help yourself here, if I can put it that way. Yeah, I think Greensboro is, is concerned just because they have a, their population. I don't know if it doubles or triples or something in the summer. Um, uh, Bless you. <laughs> with uh, with people that come that are you know live in hotspots, so 
I think that's partly why the, the concern that I was hearing was that, that they kind of want to have a little more vigilance than just sort of a general order from the governor, uh, potentially. And I don't know what that means. I'm just saying that that, that, that was sort of the, the worry that I was hearing anyway. Absolutely. I'm aware that there's a group of women that have been going around and putting notices on the porches or on the doors of camps and that they're asking for new people when they come to town that they contact the health officer and quarantine themselves for 14 days. I mean, they are taking this really seriously. Right. And they that should. Is, yeah. That is the guidance from the governor, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so, so, so it sounds like the committee has the, oh, the, the committee is already discussing all this, obviously, and they have, um, they have the authority to close it or open it or whatever they think is happening. Right? If something in the moment they decide needs to change, they can just do it. Is that right, Sean? Uh, point of clarification, the, the committee uh, had, um, Isla had reached out to me and said, uh, you know, given that the town of Hardwick owns this location, uh, we want to just make sure at the select board level there's a discussion. There has not been committee discussion as of yet. Uh, Isla and I exchanged emails today, and it was a addendum 13 is out. The select board will be discussing the issue. Uh, I will be following up with her tomorrow about uh, suggested strategies to make sure we incorporate the guidance, um, you know, to uh, uh, so folks can use that location and they understand what it is they need to do to be able to use it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess what I was getting at is that I, I guess I'm not really familiar with the purview of the committee and if they, um, like some committees are just in charge of like upkeep and some committees are in charge of, of actually like taking control of the of the park or whatever it is and they can do whatever needs to happen to make, to make it run the way it should. And so do they need authority from us? Like if they decide they're going to limit the use more or open it up, do they need anything from us or can they just do it on their own authority? We'd have to, um, I'd have to review, um, I don't recall, there's a train coming. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, so here's uh, what's, what's interesting on this is um, I am a committee member, Aaron is a committee member, but I'm wearing a, uh, I'm carrying a little bit bigger stick in this uh, representing the town of Hardwick. So what I'm trying to do as the manager, because it's a town-owned property, is I'm going to be pushing harder uh, to say, here, here's what we have to do in order for this to, to move forward uh, and be open. And so it's post signage, uh, such as, uh, you know, if you're involved using the outdoor facility uh, and you've just come into the state, have you met the 14-day requirement? Um, you know, no, no sports, no games. There's going to be no services, no transactions. Um, you know, restroom facilities may only be open if they can be regularly cleaned and disinfected. So, you know, there's a whole host of bullet points that would have to be addressed. We don't have the specific language on the signage that would go up. It's one of these gray area issues as a part of the whole COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, you know, how it impacts business operations. There's not a set way to go about this. So. The other, here's the other angle on this. I'm trying to make this work so that it is accessible because from the practical perspective, it's gonna get used. Right. Now, what happens, Lucian, to your point and your question, you know, okay, you know, we're gonna, uh, their, their, their camps are open. The people, you know, that had second homes are there. That's, we, we are aware of this. That's not unique to Greensboro. It's happening anywhere there's a camp. I mean, my interaction with some folks uh, in other areas is, you know, most of these camps are occupied as of right now. The other thing that's gonna be happening as the weather improves, Vermont is a destination. So this, you know, uh, having additional visitors isn't gonna be unique to the Caspian Beach. It's gonna be impacting us all directly. That's not about the Caspian Beach, it's just the broader perspective. So, um, I'm not sure the ultimate and best approach, Eric, is what I'm trying to get at as far as right. who makes no, the, the best, ultimate call. The best approach is that Sean and Aaron continue to work with the Beach Committee to do the best we can to comply with the governor's 
headquarters. I mean, it's not a beach that we actually open and close. We don't have a gate. We don't have an attendant. Um, it's just, you know, a community resource. I mean, it's not in some ways not that different from the beach in Macville. I mean, it is, but well, like, like the, con the well, control is similar. Right, but except that it has way higher traffic. I mean, I've, I've never been to Maxville where I'd ever have to worry about people being closer than six feet. Right. You know, Caspian, there are times when you couldn't be six feet away from people if you're on the beach. So, and also, I think there's a level of traffic of more, you know, traffic from hot spots going to be coming up. You know, granted, hopefully they're quarantining and, and it'll be good. But um, so I, th I think it's, I mean, I think the concept, conceptually they're the same, but in practic practical use, they're, they're very different. Right. But, okay. But, but we still, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you, but I think it's still not a, um, it's not, we've never really opened or closed the facility. Right. I mean, I think we should be flexible to that depending on what happens and hopefully we won't have to worry about it at all. But um, I guess the only thing I would just add to it is just that we should, um, you know, as things develop on the ground in Greens, Greensboro, um, we should just be flexible as to, um, you know, if, if they're giving us recommendations just to hear, hear them, you know, people on the ground in Greensboro on the committee, if, they, if they're having yeah. concerns, so just, so just let them know that we, we, we've heard this and we are, we're listening if they have concerns. Yeah. Yeah. And we can listen. I mean, I guess it seems to I mean, what I'm hearing as I listen is that there are a lot of concerns about um, summer people coming up. It seems to me in my experience that when I go to the beach, it's the local people at the beach and the summer people are renting lakeside cottages. So I'm not, I don't, I don't know how real the concern is for summer people coming to the beach. But. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right about that. It is mostly, but I think it's, I mean, I think it's inter, intermingled some, but it is mostly local people, I think, yeah. Yeah. I, I just have a quick, um, maybe a takeaway, Sean, that can be for a later conversation, but for the committee, I'm just wondering about um, for future decisions about the beach, if there are some budget options, so the, what the budget would be for having more cleaning of the facilities or if it didn't make sense to open the facilities and have a, a porta potty or um, maybe that's not something we need to have right now to be able to make that decision align like what the would we have to have more patrol of the beach if it were to be open um, even the boat launch would that mean that there's more of a, of a police presence I don't necessarily know but um, what some of the, the, if there would be more potential costs for that and what that would look like. Yeah, understood. Not right now, obviously, but as, as a kind of option for decision later on. I want to make sure everybody hears this, that, you know, here's the challenge we're up against on the uh, police enforcement side of things. There's no, there's literally nothing that can be done uh, as far as a fine or a fee, and I'm not advocating for that, but just the way the rule is now, we're asking people to do this. So that's why I framed it. Hey, we want people to, uh, you know, please do your best to observe, you know, uh, what the guidance is. That that comment I just made is not just about Caspian Beach. It's for everywhere in Vermont right now. You know, yeah. I've been on state. I've been on state emergency operations calls on a weekly basis, and this issue came up two weeks back for a popular swimming hole in Southwest Vermont. And the deputy fire chief said, "Look, I know I'm going to have a 70 degree day this Saturday, and I'm going to have probably 75 to 100 cars parked at this location. And I know I'm going to have a hard time if we have an incident at this swimming hole." <laughs> this creates so many logistical problems and effectively there's nothing I can do to prevent it. So again, we're, I mean, we're into brand new territory on a number of these things. Um, my observation is uh, we we're keeping an eye on the guidance. We continue to collaborate with the committee, keep open channel with the Greensboro folks, and hopefully we can navigate a process that allows for a reasonable opening and people are able to, uh, I mean, people need to get out and recreate. That's the other important thing right now, right? Where everybody's tired. This has been on since March 17th. Uh, you know, we're into almost two months of this. Uh, stay at home is what I mean to say. 
So if there's if if we can do our best to adjust to allow for you know what's an important recreational opportunity and there you know hopefully there aren't problems. That's what we attempt to do is is my opinion as a committee member and as a town manager. I think that sounds sounds good. And yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap us up on that. Um because I'm getting hungry. So next <laughs> next next item is select board reports. Does anybody have anything short? Nothing here. I can um, I, I have a little short. Um, uh, we had a really great, stupid Zoom call um, with the um, the architect that's been working with the townhouse for the uh, new uh, backstage accessibility and fire escape plan. Oh, cool! Um, he had he had worked up two different um, ideas sketches for us, and so we wanted to kind of run it past the preservation folks and see what they thought about it because we were hoping that they would like the same one that we liked the best and they did. Oh, so nice. um, it's a, it's a, looks like a really great plan so that we're still working on it. The, that cultural facilities grant is due, I don't know, sometime in July and they moved that date from May 1st to July. So we're just, you know, when we can get some bids and get some um, more interesting info together, I'll make a little presentation or something. But um, it's super cool because it it's sort of like an addition on that side of the building um, that the not depot street side of the building, the side that goes into that parking, grassy parking area. And it creates a accessible entrance to the stage um, and it's kind of like a little addition so I'll have to show you pictures and then it has yeah. the in it has in interior it's sort of like a little addition and it has an interior fire escape from the second floor balcony so um, it's kind of cool anyway it was exciting oh, sounds great because they both liked it both caitlin corkins and lisa ryan from preservation trust they both liked it they both were very supportive and we always like that when we can get extra people behind it so awesome yeah thanks sherry sure lucian were you gonna say something no i was just gonna say my computer's dying so if i disappear <laughs> <laughs> maybe kind of disappear now. done. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any new business? Old business? Nope. Adjourn. Thank you, everyone. Everybody have a good night.